Does your home lab look like this? Or is your 19 inch server rack too big? Well, this might just be the solution to all of those issues. It's a 10 inch half width server rack I built for about half the cost of a brand new one on Amazon. And I'm going to show you how you can build it yourself. But why would you want this? Well, there's been a significant and noticeable shift in the home lab community's priorities over the last few years, with mini PCs, as well as other smaller, more power efficient hardware becoming increasingly popular and not just for inexpensive budget setups. It doesn't, however, really necessarily make sense to be putting mini PCs in a full width server rack, which really defeats the compact nature of those systems. So, it's a compact rack to hold your compact computers, and that's really useful for reducing the footprint of the setup as well as for cable management and networking in general. While the 10 inch rack format isn't properly standardized, it's become common enough now that most manufacturers, as well as many 3D printed designs made by the community, all follow roughly the same measurements. The half width format keeps the standard one and three quarter inch unit thickness while reducing the total width between the edges of the mounting strips from 19 inches to 10 inches, meaning the width inside the rack goes from 17.75 inches to 8.75 inches. So firstly, we're going to be looking at how to build this, but once it's done, we'll need some hardware to install in it. And that's where this video sponsor comes in because these parts, a mini PC mount, standard shelf, and patch panel were all printed by JLC PCB's 3D printing service, JLC 3DP. JLC 3DP provides easy, affordable, and reliable 3D printing solutions, making it simple to produce bespoke parts like this shelf designed specifically to fit this HP mini PC. JLC 3DP has 13,000 square meters of factory area dedicated to over 550 3D printers with rapid turnaround and lightning fast production. Ordering with JLC 3DP is as easy as online shopping. Just upload your STL files to get an instant quote and order in minutes. This patch panel they produced for me had finished printing just eight hours after I submitted the order, which is information that's readily available because you can track every step of manufacturing in real time from their website. JLC 3DP's efficient large-scale production reduces costs and brings you unbeatable prices, and the quality of the 3D printed parts is excellent. JLC 3DP has partnered with top logistics companies, including DHL and FedEx, to provide fast and efficient shipping. Their 3D printing service starts at 30 cents, and they're offering a $60 coupon for new users, meaning you can get your parts produced quickly and affordably. Find JLC 3DP's links in the description. So, before we take a look at what you can do with a 10-inch server rack, we've got to build it. For this, I purchased 4.8 meters of 42 millimeter by 30 millimeter pine in two equal length pieces. This is a bit more than we need, but it's what was available at a hardware store local to me. I'm not entirely sure what the equivalent timber sizes in the US would be, but you could probably use one by twos and adjust the dimensions to suit. If this were a full size track build, two by fours would be appropriate. I paid the equivalent of 24 US dollars for the timber, which is as high as it is because I bought the more expensive stuff that's pre-planed and needs minimal finishing work. It is of course reasonable to just go with regular timber, and you could optionally sand or plane it yourself. There's no issue with it being a bit rough, especially since we're just building a frame to hold some computers. What I purchased isn't a cost effective way to buy timber for a project like this, but the trade-off was a higher cost for the convenience of less work. You will, of course, be limited by what's available to you. Based on the websites of a few US-based hardware stores that I had a look at for prices to give as an example, I believe you could reasonably expect to pay around 10 US dollars for 16 feet of 1x2 unfinished pine, which seems reasonable to me. We're also going to need metal rack strips, so I purchased two 6U pieces, which cost a total of 9 US dollars on Amazon. If you want rack mounts at the rear for something like a surge protected power strip or longer shelves with rear supports, then you'll need four rather than just two. The back ones are entirely optional and there's plenty of setups that can get by without them. You can also get longer ones, usually up to 42 units, so you could theoretically build a 42 unit 10 inch rack, although you probably shouldn't do that. You can do more than I've done here, such as enclosing the bottom, sides, back, and you can even make a door for the front, but all that isn't necessary for a basic rack build, and enclosing it may reduce airflow, which would require additional fans, which you could of course 3D print mounts for, or mount them on the front or back panels. 
In terms of adjustments that will need to be made for different sizes of timber than what I used here, the four vertical pieces will need the most changes. These pieces can be adjusted for any length of rack strip, so to determine the correct length you'll need to do some very basic maths. The length of these pieces is the thickness of the timber on its thin side for the front, in this case 30 millimeters, which we need to include twice for the top and the bottom, added to the length of the rack strip, which in this case was roughly 27 centimeters. I added an extra centimeter for clearance, giving a total length of 34 centimeters. We're building it with the thin side of the timber facing the front, and therefore also will attach the top pieces with their thin side facing the front. The front and back horizontal pieces may also need adjustment depending on the rack strip because the strip I purchased is wider than it technically should be. While the total width should be 10 inches or 25.4 centimeters, it might not be if the rack strip is too wide. If the front of the rack strip is 15.875 millimeters or 5 eighths of an inch wide, then the total width of the front should be 25.4 centimeters or 10 inches, which would then give the correct spacing between the holes of 236.525 millimeters or 9 and 5 sixteenths of an inch. This correct spacing is essential because otherwise the shelves won't fit. The easiest way to figure out the correct spacing for rack strip that isn't a standard width is to lay it out on a flat surface and use a shelf or patch panel to determine the correct spacing. I measured it and found that the horizontal pieces of timber would need to be 26 centimeters long for the 1.9 centimeter wide rack strip that I have here. I would suggest measuring it yourself though because if you use my measurements on rack strip of a different width, it won't work. Finally, the front to back horizontal pieces, the ones on the side, can be as long as you want depending on the depth you need. I went with 30 centimeters, but you could make it longer or shorter depending on what you're installing. Also, to be clear, there's plenty of different ways to build a timber box like this. This is just the method I'm going with because I don't need an enclosed server rack. You could also build the frame out of aluminium extrusion and depending on where you get it, it can be a reasonably affordable option too. You could just 3D print the entire rack too, or even use an IKEA cabinet. These are all very reasonable options for do-it-yourself 10-inch server racks that wouldn't really always be possible on a full-width rack because of the weight and size of the components you'd install in it. You may also want to consider using a pocket hole jig and pocket hole screws, although you can make joints without using pocket holes if you want, and that's what I'd recommend. The pocket hole jig I purchased cost around $10 on Amazon, and for that price, it's, it's good enough. The jig itself is fine, but the worst part of these cheap kits are the drill bits, which are usable, but they're nowhere near as sharp as they really should be. The reason I went with this is because I wanted to attempt to build this with pocket holes, but was unwilling to invest in a more expensive but also higher quality tool, primarily because I'll likely never need to use it again. To be clear, however, pocket hole joints are unnecessary, time consuming and somewhat annoying if you use the cheaper kits and you really don't need to use them. I'm using wood glue as well for the joints and regardless of what kind of joints you use I would suggest using glue. Another useful tool is a miter box and an appropriate saw for it. This isn't strictly necessary because there are plenty of different ways to cut timber with a reasonable level of precision and if you don't have saws yourself some hardware stores will do it for you when you purchase timber from them but this is what I'm using because I already have it. That's not to say that all miter boxes are good and this one honestly isn't but it does make cutting timber accurately by hand somewhat easier. Finally, how am I going to seal the timber? The answer is that I'm just not going to. There's plenty of ways to seal timber, such as paint or oil-based sealants, but this isn't at risk of exposure to liquid, as furniture would be, and it won't be out in the weather, so it is acceptable to not seal it. That's not to say that you shouldn't, rather than I'm not going to, but you can, of course, if you want to. So, adding up the cost. The timber was $24, but I purchased more expensive stuff, and you could easily spend as little as $10, US dollars, depending on what you choose to buy. I base that estimated cost upon what is available at a variety of hardware stores in the United States because a quarter of my audience is from there. And while I may have paid a lot for the timber I bought, you really don't need to. The pocket hole jig was approximately $10 and the pocket hole screws are typically around $5 for $100. The wood glue was roughly $6 and the rack strips were roughly $9. 
Finally, a 50 pack of cage nuts and bolts can typically be had for around 10, but I only purchased cage nuts because I already had the bolts. That brings my total to roughly 64 US dollars, which is as high as it is because of the timber I used, but I think you would reasonably expect to spend around 50 US dollars if you purchase cheaper timber. The prices I provided here were what I paid in Australian dollars converted to US dollars at the current exchange rate at the time of writing. Keep in mind that prices may not be the same depending on what's available to you and I'm not including tools like a drill and a saw in the pricing because they're common tools I can reasonably expect most people to have. And now to build it. First I cut the timber into 12 pieces, four of each length. I lightly sanded the ends being careful to keep them flat and not take too much off. I should have installed the rack strip at this point because it's much easier to attach now rather than when the front is assembled, but I forgot. Finally, I drilled pocket holes in each of the eight horizontal pieces, but not the vertical pieces because they don't need them. For the assembly, I started by screwing together the front and back. I clamped one upright piece to the sawhorse using a piece of scrap timber to prevent the clamp from damaging it, and then I applied glue and clamped the other piece onto it, making sure it was aligned correctly. Finally, I screwed it together. I made sure the pocket hole joints were on the outside because you can't get to them properly if they're on the inside. Now with the front and back assembled, I screwed and glued all of the side pieces onto them. The next step is where it gets a bit annoying because to finish this we have to screw all four of those pieces into the other end. There isn't much footage of the final assembly because I forgot to turn the camera back on. And there we have it, a do-it-yourself 10-inch server rack build. So, how did this turn out? Well, it's alright. There's one fairly significant issue, which is that some of the side pieces aren't straight, resulting in the entire thing being somewhat crooked when viewed from above. I certainly won't pretend that I built this particularly well. It's not an area I'm experienced with, although the main issue was that one of the pieces of timber was slightly warped, which I unfortunately didn't notice when purchasing it. Overall, this isn't perfect, but it does work fine as a server rack and the shelves definitely do fit. Something else to consider is that pocket hole joints aren't really necessary and may not even be a particularly good idea. You can just skip them entirely if you want because it's a lot of extra work. Anyway, I think this demonstrates the point adequately because it was inexpensive compared to the ones that can be bought from sites like Amazon, but there are a few trade-offs to consider. The first downside is that you do actually have to build it. The cost savings are counted by the time and effort it takes to build something like this, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. If this is a hobby for you, as it is for many, including me, then investing time in building this might even be a positive thing. It can be fun, and once it's finally done, the satisfaction of having built it yourself can also be pretty good. Point is, a few hours of work on the weekend is worth it if you have the time available to do that, but not everyone does. The other downside is that it does definitely look and feel in this case, a lot less premium than some of the pre-assembled mini racks, but of course the counter to that is the cost savings and having built it myself. Also, it doesn't have to be mediocre, I'm just not particularly good at building stuff like this. I suspect most of these downsides won't be significant to some of the people who'd consider building this, considering I've seen plenty of people online posting 3D printed mini racks and a few even posting ones built from IKEA cabinets. Also, a significant positive is that it's more easily customizable. Now, we need something to put in the rack, and that's where JLC 3DP comes in, because they 3D printed three parts for me. A patch panel, a shelf, and a mount for my HP ProDesk Mini. The shelf and mini PC mount were printed in PLA, and the patch panel was printed in resin, and I'm very happy with all three. The quality of the prints is very good, and I'm not just saying that because they've sponsored the video. They are genuinely good prints. You can find the links to the parts I had printed in the description. Since I used rack strip with square holes, we need some cage nuts, so I installed them and then installed the parts. I put the shelf at the bottom with the patch panel above it and then the HP Mini above that. This isn't of course a final setup or anything, rather just a demonstration that it does of course work as well as any server rack should. I installed some keystone jacks into the patch panel which clip into place very easily but still fit snugly. Finally, I put a little network switch on the shelf and slid the HP Mini into its mount. There are mounts available for many different models of mini PCs, which is something that I haven't seen available pre-made in, like, steel, rather just as 3D print designs. There were even some mini PC mounts similar to this one that included keystone jack holes 
either side of the mini PC, which would potentially be very helpful for organizing network cables. There are plenty of other things you can 3D print for your mini rack, like fan mounts for increased airflow, as well as hard drive base, cable organizers, network switch mounts, Raspberry Pi mounts, and even an entire mini ITX case, because yes, that will of course fit. A few things to keep in mind, however, are that there are 3D models available online that won't fit a rack like this correctly, either because they use non-standard measurements or screw hole spacing, or they were simply designed incorrectly, or for other rack systems that use different measurements to this. So, I would suggest opening the STL files and checking the width and hole spacing prior to printing so you don't discover that what you've printed doesn't fit after printing it. Overall, I'm personally very happy with how this turned out. It's an affordable way to get into rack-mounted equipment and means your mini PCs and other small equipment can be organized and tidy. This is, of course, just one of the many ways you can build a 10-inch mini rack, and you could always build it from aluminium extrusion, or even just 3D print the entire thing. There's plenty of different options, so I hope this video has been useful. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all next time.